Days are cooler, nights are warmer, and I put the blame on you. Time moves slow, but my heart beats faster. With these eyes, I'm looking right at you, right at you. You give me something to believe in, just what I need it. You're the closest. And we're getting ready for November, so we're calling in reinforcements. Let me welcome back to the show co-founder of Black Voters Matter. Black Voters Matter, let me welcome the great Cliff Albright. Hello. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. It's good to be back. Good to, good to see you. Um, I was reading this article from the New York Times about the elephant in the room and black men and blah, blah, blah. And I am roundly rejecting this notion and i'm going to talk more about it after you leave but you are a black man (laughs) was there any moment of hesitation when it was announced that kabla harris would be the presumptive nominee for the democratic party no 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 hesitation at all in fact even even before it was announced you know I, i had already done some interviews um you know saying that if somehow biden did drop out and that they tried to jump over Vice President Harris, that there would be consequences and repercussions, you know, so those of us out there that are Eddie Murphy fans may recognize that line. And so, um, but, you know, seriously, we had I'd already staked that ground before it even happened. So certainly once it was announced, there was no hesitation. And I'm proud to have been one of the 50, 54,000, 50,000 plus that were on that, that first um, when with black men call and, and not just as a listener, but I also got a chance to speak on that, that call and, um, and shout out to the black women that, that kicked it off by, by organizing themselves within just a few hours of the announcement being made that Sunday. But, you know, but black men followed up soon and then, and then everybody else, you know, came out following up as well. So no, no hesitation at all. What, what I learned about that, the call with the women on that Sunday was that, this call had been going on for years yeah. on a Sunday. Yeah. So so it also l- lent to the notion that you don't have to get ready if you stay ready. So these women exactly. have already been ready having these these conversations on a Sunday. It just exploded numbers wise. But That's the right. agenda was always about how we can make a more more perfect union or how we can have more say and more power and more influence. And, and influ- influential women were committing their Sundays to having a conversation. And it just happened that they could then have a larger conversation, but they were already ready. Definitely. And and that's what, you know, a lot of the other groups, you know, didn't didn't really understand that, that they had already been in formation. In fact, if I remember correctly, I think that call may have started years ago with the original call for Biden to select um, a, a black woman to be uh, his his running mate. So. So, yeah, they they they've been ready. They've been meeting. They've been in relationship. And that made, you know, made that call be able to jump off that that much faster and easier. Um, we selected you as one of our Urban View uh, gives uh, co- uh, communities, uh, uh, organizations, because of the work that you and Latasha are doing to get us registered information, get us out to the polls, et cetera. Um, where are you now in, in terms of Black Voters Matter and what, what are you actually doing leading between now and November to get us ready? Well, first, thank you, you know, for for that selection. You know, it means it means a lot to us. And I'm sure I speak for Latasha as well. So thank you. And, and just for the support that you, you've always given to us and to this work more broadly. So thank you for for what you do. And, you know, where we're at is, you know, we um, are targeting 12 states. Um, we do we touch 25 states or so, you know, in one way or another. But there's 12 states that we're really targeting um, in regards to mobilizing voters, either for presidential election, Senate elections, which is an important issue. I don't want us to lose sight of, of these important Senate elections, because at the end of the day, you know, if, if we don't have some a couple more Senate seats, then some of um, Madam President's agenda won't be able to be acted on. And so, you know, I want to keep that in mind. But yeah, 12 states that we're looking at, and then two states that we're looking at 
in terms of Congress? Because again, a lot of people think that the road to control of Congress runs through New York or runs through California. We believe that it may run through Alabama and Louisiana, mm. right? Two important mm. states that just got two new congressional districts because of uh, redistricting and, and rulings against racist gerrymandering. So there's there's two states like that. But say, then, say more. Say more. OK, yeah. so first, Cliff, Cliff Albright is here, co-founder of Black Voters Matter. You can go to Cliff at Cliff underscore notes. Uh, to follow them, if you uh, you can go to Urban View Gives, look in the archives if you want to donate or text. We matter to two five two two five. We matter to two five two two five. What are the twelve states that you guys are targeting? So, in addition to those two, which are really really focused on that, those congressional seats, so that was Alabama, Mississippi. But in addition to those two, uh, we've got Georgia, we've got North Carolina, we've got. Um, up north, we've got Pennsylvania, Michigan, Ohio, which a lot of people don't think is in play. They think that it's just a reliable red state, but we believe that it's very much in play. Um, and, and especially with Kamala Harris being on the, the ticket, you know, we're looking for some some increases in black turnout in places like Cleveland and Columbus and Cincinnati and, and other places. So Ohio is one of those. Wisconsin. Um uh, Maryland is another one, not so much because of the presidential race, but as you know, there's, there's an important Senate race there where, again, a black woman, keep in mind, there's, there's currently no black woman in, in the U.S. Senate. Um, and we've got a chance for there to be two black women, at least two, um, you know, through this through this cycle. And that's that's, so that's also also Brooke. Is also that Brooks. Exactly. Uh, yes. Also yes. Okay. Um, and um, where's the other you know, where's the other black woman uh, potential? in Delaware? In, in Delaware, okay. Lisa Blunt Rochester, who's currently a congressperson. You may remember there was a video that went viral um, a couple of years ago before John Lewis passed away where he was dancing. Um, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and she that's who was dancing with him. That's okay. by no means her only claim to fame, right? She's been a, a stalwart um, supporter of voting rights and a range of other issues. And so she's looking to move from Congress to the to the Senate um, in his favor to do so there. So, um, so yeah, so Maryland is one of those 10 states. And then we got these stretch states, you know, that that people aren't necessarily taken seriously. But again, we we believe that it's worth investing in and, and that they may very well be in play. And that's Texas and Florida. Um, a lot yes. of people write off Florida is no longer being a battleground. No, I think Florida but... is in play this time around. Mm -hmm. we, uh, yep. Did you say Louisiana? Is that one of them or Louisiana in terms of the congressional seat? So okay. Louisiana so that's one, and two, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I got the twelve. Okay. So if y'all and I'm gonna repeat them after Cliff leaves as well. What do you need from people in these battle in these states that you guys are targeting? In, well, people in these states, but also pe people in other states can get involved because some of the work that we do is is work that can be done virtually. And so in, in all of those states, um, we're we're trying to touch black folks through every mechanism that we can. That's phone banking, that's text text banking, that's door knocks, that's billboards, that's waving signs on the roads, it's it's smoke signal, you you name it. <laughs> and we're trying to reach reach black folks, you know, with the message around one, you know, how important this election is. And 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 you know, we hate to say it, you know, sometimes it's trite to say this is the, the most important election of our lifetime, but you know, you and I know. There's some things that play in this election that we've never seen before. You know, we've, we've never seen an election of a former president trying to come back, um, talk about he's going to be dictator on day one. We've never seen an election following an insurrection at the Capitol building, a violent insurrection at the at the Capitol building. You know, so there's some things that that are at play here Um where, you know, we can honestly say that this really is the most important election. This could be an election that determines whether or not there will be other elections. You know, right. the, the orange and the orange man said to the Christians, <laughs> come on out, Christians, come vote. You won't have to do it again. We, we're not going to have any more elections. <laughs> right? So he I'm said that. And, and the Supreme Court that he said will give the president full immunity to do whatever he wants. Exactly. Um, so, exactly. so there's that. Um, Imani Gandhi was on uh, Larry Daniel Favors. I don't know if it was a repeat, but she said something really profound. She said, uh, you know, in holding Kamala Harris uh, accountable over abortion rights and reproductive rights, she said, I want to protest her. I'd rather protest her than protest Donald Trump 
where I will land in prison. And I'm going to exactly. add or be killed because the last protest um, for George Floyd, he asked, can we shoot them? That's right. Now he could do that if he's president with immunity and there's no recourse and you no would definitely recourse. be arrested. So so let's let's have somebody in office that we can protest safely, live, <laughs> you know, press and not end up in jail or dead messing with, you know, protesting and being outraged. Even all of the protesters out there protest. Definitely right. hold people accountable, but recognize that these two candidates are not the same as it relates to your rights to protest. That's right. That's right. They are not the same. And you're exactly right. He wanted them to get, he wanted us, right? The people in the street to get shot. He wants, he's, he said it. He wants police to have absolute immunity. So while you got one side in our communities trying to go in the other direction saying we need to go from from qualified immunity to no immunity, you got him trying to go in another direction, talk about, I want them to have absolute immunity. And so again, when you look at the differences, when you look at the fact that under this current administration, there's actually, this Department of Justice has actually been very aggressive uh, in terms of holding police departments accountable. Kristen Clark and the Office of Civil Rights there, the Department of Justice, they've been doing work, not just police departments, but corrections officers. They, they just... They just um um did a prosecution of 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 a corrections officer that that uh, I think choked somebody right and so in years past these things had gone uh un un with no accountability and in years future under a Trump presidency there would be no accountability because again he wants them to have absolute immunity there are night and day differences anybody out there trying to say that you know there's no difference and these are all the all the same that's that's just not based in reality. My days are cooler, nights are warmer, and I put the blame on you. Time moves slow, but my heart beats faster. When these eyes are looking right at you, right at you, you give me something to believe in, just what I needed. You're the closest.